issue with I'm, I'm recording now for sure this time around. but it might be more prevalent it's definitely now. recording <laughs> We on? We on? Yeah. Welcome back, Action Knuckle Faithful. Those, I'm your host. Those are transactions wait, wait, wait. taxes. We're not recording anymore? We're recording. I'm paying my friend for my share of the meal. Or Production. Or I'm sure. I'm We're recording. a gift to a relative. That's not All a right. transaction. All right. Um, the issue is- That was fun. Situations where <laughs> we were just talking about the whole card. And uh, yeah. my man said, no, we ain't hitting the record button. We were just running this trial. We, we ran a free trial, man. We canceled the fees. So we, we ran back. a live stream. If you if you caught that, that's a rare one off. <laughs> and it is gone now. It is gone forever. That was beautiful too. <laughs> but we'll move on to the to the future. To the present. Not the future. The right Welcome now. Back. Welcome back, Ashy Knuckle Faithful. Ashy Knuckle fam. I'm your host, B Woods. I got my man Mark G. What's up? My right hand man Mosey P was popping. Hi, I'm uh, recording. <laughs> I believe him. I don't know why, but I do. Um, we got a UFC 271 preview show. Adesanya versus Whitaker two, the rematch, run it back for it all. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about that fight. We'll talk about that at the uh, at the at the end of the show. We'll probably spend the most time on that one. Um, loaded card, real good, a lot of good matchups, a lot of big names, a lot of implications. Starting at the bottom, we got Jeremiah Wells taking on Blood Diamond in a welterweight matchup. Douglas Silva, DeAndrage taking on Sergey Morozov in a bantamweight matchup. Carlos Oberg versus Fabio Charant, like heavyweight matchup. And then we got Alexander Hernandez taking on Renato Moicano in a lightweight matchup. Mark, what do you think about this fight? It's an interesting fight. I think it's actually a well-matched up fight, and they both have something to prove right now because they've been kind of hit and miss on their win win streaks or back and forth. Uh, but I think Alex Hernandez's boxing will take this one. Okay, I can see that. What's up, um, what do you, Mo, what do you think? A good matchup for the, honestly, I think it could have been on the regular prelims, but they got to have something in there. Both uh, kind of got decent names, popularity enough. Yeah, at one time, um, Alexander Hernandez, the, the great ape, as he calls himself, he was recognized as being like one of those new up and coming prospects until that whole cowboy fight kind of derailed that, that shine. But then Moicano, I mean, Same we thing. got that. He was fighting. He had, like, challenger status at a point. Title yeah. challenger status. So this, this should be a good one. I'm leaning Hernandez as well, but this is one of those fights where um, I want to see the numbers before I make any decisions on who I'm picking. Um, uh, Mar Mana Martinez versus Ronnie Lawrence is going to be the – the main event for the early prelims and some of those fight pass only cards. And then we're going to, then we have William Knight taking on maximum Grishin in a light heavyweight bout. Talk about that one, Mark UG. William Knight last out against Alonzo Menafield surprised me. He showed that he does have cardio. He has heart. He can make it all three rounds and get to a decision and still swing for the fences the whole damn time. So I think Alonzo, or sorry, correction, William Knight will get this one by knockout and probably knockout in the third round. Mm, mm. Mo, talk about it. I like uh, Knight for the knockout any round. He got a tattoo of Akuma on his arm, so he's about that power. If it's free, it's me. This man got Goki on his arm. Also known as Akuma, the Raging Demon. I agree with my boys. I'm taking William Knight too. Knockout at any point. Um, up next, we got Alex Perez taking on Matt Schnell in a flyweight bout. Then we got Roxanne Mataferi taking on Casey O'Neill in a woman's flyweight bout. Mark G, retirement fight? Bye -bye. Retirement for Roxanne Mataferi. It's a sad thing to see the happy warrior go. But... She's doing her thing, and 
I don't think she'd want it any other way than having a tough competitor as her last fight. Her her opponent's undefeated in the UFC and has nothing but finishes all the way through, and I think she has three fights. And you know what? I'm ready to see it, but I'm going to go for Roxanne in this one just because let's let her go out on a win. I didn't know the girl was undefeated, so she's a up-and-comer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Women's flyweight prospect. Oh, she's moving down in weight from bantamweight? Yes. Flyweight does need some new uh, blood in there. Sure does. And Casey O'Neill fits the bill. She got, Her last win was uh, she took out one of the Shevchenko sisters. Not the championship one, not the legendary one, but the other one's really good too. So that was a, that was that was a fight that I lost. I remember that. I remember taking Antonia and being very disappointed, but very impressed by Casey O'Neill. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, up next, we got Andre Vlowski versus Jared Vendera in a heavyweight matchup. Andre Vlowski has to be like what sixty five. <laughs> he got that AARP. He definitely does. Look, man, Andre is still doing it, man. He's making the, the 40-plus crowd feel good. I mean, like, come on, man. This man has been in the UFC for since I was, like, 10. So, I'm – Yeah. What do you, what do you think – what are your thoughts on this fight, Mark? I mean, Andre's been around forever. He's been there, done that, and he's still kicking. He's still getting good, notable wins, and I love to watch him. So as long as he'll be around, I will still watch him. And I honestly think that Andre can pull this one off, be that veteran that he is, and kill baby Mitrion over here. Talk on him, Mo. What you think, bro? I'm hoping the old pit bull wins. The old pit bull. Because there's like how many pit bulls out there now? Like 50. Yeah, know, there's another one on this card. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go, old Pitbull. You know what? Um, I think about my favorite Andre Alvlowski moments in a highlight reel every time I hear his name. So it's hard for me to ever pick against that for nostalgic reasons of just I hear Andre Alvlowski, I think about all the crazy matchups, all the great fights, and dude's still putting it on. So yeah. I'm leaning Andre as well. I hope he can get it done. And you know what? I hope he gets it done in impressive fashion. Uh, up next, we got Bobby Green taking on Nazareth Has Hasparas Hagparas. <sighs> Why so many consonants? Mini Kelvin, Baby Kelvin, in a lightweight matchup. Nazareth, my bad for butchering your name, Big Daddy. You, I mean, look, dog, come on, man. <laughs> Nazareth, understand at this point. <laughs> Come on, bro. Is the Q silent? <laughs> I think so. That's why I can't, that's why I'm looking at it like why are you here then? Why are you quiet ass sitting in this chat if you want to just be quiet? He just um, wants to be affiliated. For real. He's like, I'm chill with the P. <laughs> I'm right next to him. <laughs> for real, man. It's good. I mean, listen, this is a this is a really good matchup. Bobby Green is uh always tough, always putting on a good show, and so is Nasper, and so is Nazrat. They both are capable of putting on a really good show. Uh, talk about it, Mo. Mo, what do you think, man? Bobby Green all the way. Okay. Bobby Green's my boy. I will ride or die with him. I don't know why, but I love that man. And I think his boxing will take over this. I I like that. I I do. I, I am leaning Bobby Green. I like uh, Nazrat a lot. Both guys are... Like really tough. Um, Bobby Green, I last time I uh, covered a Bobby Green fight was against um, the real estate agent. And I went uh, against my – yep, I went against my uh, – like I, I went against Bobby Green because I always pick against the real estate agent, L.I. Quinta. I always take – I always pick the other guy whenever Al's fighting – and I feel like this happens to me every time. But I'm going to just ride out with Bobby Green on this one. 
and not mentally like play with that game, play that game. Um, up next, we got Kyler Phillips versus Marcel- Marcelo Rojo in a bantamweight bout. Mo, talk about wh- talk about um, this fight a little bit. What do you think? I don't know much about Rojo. I know his uh, nickname's the other pit bull. Well, he's a bantamweight. That's one hundred thirty-five pounds. So he's a baby a baby pit bull. I'm going I, with I, I, uh, Phillips though. All right, he's a prospect. I think uh, if he wins, they might line him up with what's the name? Colorful hair, O'Malley. O'Malley, that's a good matchup, actually. They have a common opponent. Boom. Paiva. Well, yeah. O'Malley mm-hmm. might not want him since he's technically ranked now. No, he was calling out a different guy. Forgot his name already. He had a Mark. Chris Striking. Can't remember his name. We can talk about that when we yeah. get back to uh Yeah, we'll talk O'Malley. about that another day. Yeah. But as far as this matchup, Mark, how do you feel? To be honest, I don't know enough about Rojo, to be honest. I, I know Kyler Phillips is a good prospect coming up, and the betting odds seem to have his uh, his number on there, Four, minus 400 versus plus 300. So I guess I'll go with Kyler Phillips on this one. Well, the good thing about these cards is every single time, there's at least a couple upsets. Where these big favorites lose. Oh, no, if you look at the entirety of the card, all fifteen fights. Uh, if you don't know a lot about Marcelo, he is sixteen and eight in his career. He made his UFC debut, um, and it, it was a loss. This is his second UFC fight, so he's on a one fight losing streak. He's taking on Kyler Phillips, who is a prospect. He's also on a one fight losing streak. His last fight was against. Julian Paeva, and he got he lost that one. I'm I'm leaning Kyler Phillips too. This is one of those fights where I mean he's such a big favorite. I would just toss him into uh, a little parlay with a couple other fights, and then just bet a little bit, hope to make a couple bucks. Um, if you can get a couple in a row, right? Jared Cannonier taking on Blonde Brunson, bro. This is why this fight has a lot of implications. Uh, this is the middleweight division. This is the top of the middleweight division. And one of these guys could be looking at a title shot. Um, Mar- uh, Mark, talk about how you feel about this matchup. This is such a good matchup to me. It really is. It's, it's conflicting styles. And the other thing about this matchup is you just want to know where Brunson's going to come in. Because calm and collective Brunson, usually blonde Brunson, is a fucking killer. And I think that he can actually beat almost anyone in the division. But Jared Cannonier, one of the best strikers in the division, maybe under Israel Adesanya. But I honestly think that Brunson can take this one out. I think that Brunson's going to come in here. He's learned from his past mistakes. He's finally grown up. And he's going to actually just take this one. Mo, what do you think? Matchup is very intriguing for both sides. Whoever wins this one is definitely getting a title shot, no matter who wins in the main event. Brunson can win it with his wrestling, maybe. Could even submit him. Cannoneer, he could, he could knock his head off. So I'm just watching it as a fan, enjoying it. No picks. I like what Mark said about the new focus of Derek Brunson. Blonde hair Brunson, ever since he has that that little streak he's this little run he's been on, he he's a different fighter. Um very improved in every all it seems like all the areas where he was a little bit lacking, he kind of shored that shit up. No more chin straight in the air, wild ass striking. He's mixing up the levels with his wrestling, which is one of his strong points. And he's a much more dangerous fighter when he's fighting like that. Like he's way, I mean, he, he's not getting highlight reel victories, but he's beating top comp. He's beating guys who are, um, you know, in that upper deck of the top 10 with this style, 
his current style he's fighting. However, um, I'm leaning Cannoneer. I think this is a big fight for his career. This is the this is the biggest fight of his career. And at this point, if he can come out and look impressive in a victory against Derek Brunson, he's undeniable for the title. Like I, it does, it won't matter. Um, it'll be a rematch either way because it'll be. It'll, it wouldn't be a rematch either way because of how I feel the the main event's gonna go. But I'll talk about that in a second. But I think he does present a different challenge for Izzy. Um, Mark, Mark, what you said earlier about I know I'm sure well, so Mo said he's you know one of the best strikers in the division. The champion Israel Adesanya is arguably the best striker in the company, regardless of the division. Um, obviously he's, you know, cream of the crop of the middleweights, but he has an extensive kickboxing record and he's impressive in the stand-up game. Like what he did to Polo Costa was nothing short of just like a clinic. Like he, he was drunk. He, he definitely was. We saw him. We saw him pass out too and get raw dog. Um <laughs> It's this is interesting. I, like I said, I'm, I'm leaning Cannon here in this one, but um, this this fight, like, like you said, I think this can go. This is a very close matchup. Both of these guys are hungry. Both um, are surging. Jared just got the victory over Kelvin Gastelum and Derek Brunson. Once he turned that Super Saiyan light on, bro, he's a different guy. So Blonde Brunson's on. He looking good. I'm curious. I want to see how both guys look because I'm as far as like health. Which we will never know until they walk to the cage, but this is gonna be a good way in. Yeah. Oh, by way in. I mean, it's 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 Tuesday. This is how we feel right now. So that could change. Um, It's Tuesday, bro. Derek Lewis versus Ty Tuivasa. Hmm. Heavyweight matchup. This is nothing short of like, you know how. You go to a restaurant, bro, and they got your favorite thing on the menu. And even though they got new shit, you're like, ah, I'm still getting that. This is what this kind of fight is, man. Like you're you're getting basically a, to me a mirror match of styles. Like they're both heavy punchers. They want to get the knockout. Lots of highlight reels. No nonsense. No frills. Let's go. Mark G, talk about this matchup a little bit and how you feel. You're absolutely right. This this fight is nothing but fanfare. Period. This is nothing but fanfare, and I love every bit of it. This is nothing but knockout artists just flinging at each other. I will say, though, I do think that even though they're very similar, that Derek Lewis has the hand speed and the technique over Ty. Doesn't mean that this isn't going to be a close fight, but I think Derek Lewis is going to pull it out in the end. He has shown over and over again that he is the top of the division and he will knock out anyone in his way on that way to the title fight. He just can't pull it out in the big one show. He has not pulled it out in the big show yet. 0-2 in, in both attempts. Um, Mo, what do you think, bro? I'm going with the uh, home team on this one. Derek Lewis and Ty Two of Us are like the same guy. This one was born in Australia. One was born in the United States. So I'm going with the guy with the home team by submission. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> I want to know the numbers on that. I want to know how what's, it's probably like. I'm going to say that's at least plus 1,500. By submission. For Derek Lewis. That's to win a good bet. Does, does he even have a win by sub? He's got one. He's got one, at least one. He it, it does? It, yes. Yeah, what was it, a key lock? Uh, one. I don't think so. One win by submission. Make it two on Saturday. Wait, who who did he beat by submission? I don't oh, know. I gotta know this. But it, it says submission one. I gotta look this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. Well, look. So here's how I feel about it. Um, these are both okay. So both these guys are big heavyweights. I mean, like I think Mo kind of nailed it. They're they basically the same guy. 
Um, different, different countries, same guy. To me, this is the battle of who has the best post-fight celebration. The Shui with Tai Tuivasa, Derek Lewis with the Black Beast dry hump that he does to the cage, pound his chest, slam his fist, and then go deep on the cage while licking his tongue out into the crowd. Um, both are iconic. Derek always has crazy post-fight interviews. So does Ty. It's just so crazy Like as far as the entertainment ability of both guys in this matchup. I'm taking Derek Lewis in this one. Not because of home field advantage. Not because of like USA versus another country. I just like Derek Lewis. So I want to see him do that little chest pound and slam the cage after a crazy first round knockout. I, I don't see this fight going past one round. This is one of those things where both guys are knockout artists. So they might be a little bit more respectful of each other's power and they might play the point game. However, if they happen to engage, it's only going to take a few shots. Derek can take some. We know that. We know Derek can take a shot and keep going. Um, we don't have to find out about Ty. So that's I'm, I'm excited about this one. I'm taking Derek Lewis. And then we got the main event, baby, the criminal. One second. Crim- What's up? One What's second. Up? Derek Lewis beat Rakeem Cleveland and Worldwide Gladiator by armbar. Woo! That's a Did real not sub. expect an armbar. That's a real sub. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu. Now we can move on. Hold on. Mo, how, how good you feel about this, man? About the submission? How good you feel about this? How good? Not good. <laughs> not good. This is more, more of those or- ones where uh, you flip a coin and hope it happens. Do you feel more than twenty dollars good? Like, would you put twenty on it? I put ten. What, what's put the 10? odds? Though? Hold on, what's the odds? That got, that that has to be plus fifteen hundred or more. Yeah, if it's I'll put twenty over, on that if shit. If it's plus one thousand, I'd put twenty on it. Just to throw it out there. I'll take I'll, after this. We'll talk about it because I, I, I'm looking at the numbers and then uh, we'll talk about it. We'll, 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 we'll so that's got to be a crazy proposition. It might even be more than a thousand. Hey, he's got an armbar on his record. That's a hell yeah. of an armbar. Not in the UFC. No. So he might stun him and go for a choke. That's why I think. That's why I can. That's the only way I can see it. But he's so punch heavy in his finishing when he goes to finishes. Like he'll punch you and just till you stop till they stop you. That's why I'm like, will, will he go for a guillotine if this becomes a grappling type match, or will he? Because Derek is unpredictable. He will do some wild shit. Like, he does, like, jumping, fucking bicycle kicks. And fuck, he's willing to take a high, like, high risk. We lost him for a second, Brian. Yeah, you, you, uh, you froze up a bit. Still here? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, Derek Lewis is willing to go for those crazy techniques in the striking game. Just haven't seen it in the UFC in the grappling department yet. The, his jiu-jitsu so far is just he just gets up. Sure. The, power, old, the famous power lift. The famous horsepower. He just like, I'm just going to get up. Yeah. He just stands up. No technique. Like, just I'm getting up. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> Everybody else is like, how do you do that? Like, we got to work through steps to get up. He's like, I just stand up. Popeyes. <laughs> Speaking of Popeyes, we don't get to the meat of this one. Uh, middleweight matchup for all the marbles, bro. We got a rematch. Israel Adesanya taking on Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker, last style bender. Let's do it again. Marky G, I'm gonna get I'm gonna, I'm gonna get yours your take last because I know this is a passionate subject for you. Definitely, yes, it is. Definitely. Mo, talk about it. Me? I think this fight is not going to go the same way it did the first time. I think Whitaker has learned from his mistakes and he's going to come in with a different game plan. I don't think it's going to be rushing in like how he did last time. I think, if anything, he'll try to work his way in and get close enough to Dirty Box and get him up against the cage. I don't think he's strong enough to hold him down on the ground. 
But you never know. But I'm leaning towards Israel by decision in this fight. I think it's going to be a five-round technical striking affair. Couldn't agree more. Marky G, uh, what's up? How will Robert Whitaker win? Robert Whitaker will win. I'm just saying, this will not be the same fight. I don't know who fought Izzy the first time, but it wasn't Robert Whitaker. Period. That just wasn't him. He he has said himself that he, he came in there bothered by all the pressure, bothered by what Izzy was saying. He wasn't mentally there. He was already over the game of MMA. I mean, two fights with Yoel probably would do that to anybody. But I will say that he has his mindset the right way now. He has his, he's back to old, old, old Robert that just wants to fight for the pure love of fighting and he wants it back. So therefore, I think he's going to come in more technical. He's going to get in on there. Like Mosley said right there, he's going to get that dirty boxing in where I think Izzy is actually the weakest. I don't think this is going to be wrestling much. I think he's going to get that dirty boxing and outpoint him to a unanimous decision. Okay. Okay. I'm a big Robert Whitaker fan. I have been since he was a welterweight. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan for sure. Um, I think if he were to get this win, I feel like the his to me the only way I see Robbie Rob getting this win is if he can somehow take Izzy out. He his path to victory to me his only path to victory is if this fight doesn't go five rounds. He has to like get a sub or knock Izzy out. That's the that's the way I see this going. However, I I don't see Robert winning this fight at all. I, I kind of agree with Mo that it will be a technical stand-up battle. I, I'm pretty sure it will go all five unless um, somehow Robert just gets frustrated and then gets knocked out and right, somehow gets frustrated and rushes in. I don't think that's going to be a part of the game plan or the adjustments. I think Robert, is the, the, the whole mindset coming in this one versus Izzy will be to make it technical. I just think Izzy's the best striker in the division and the company right now. I mean, there's one guy that might uh, be able to say otherwise, another newcomer to the middleweight division who also uh, came from the kickboxing world. We'll talk about him in a little bit too, but uh, on a further podcast, on like future podcasts, but I think Izzy's going to put on the clinic, man. He's focused. Um, I'm just, I don't see much that Rob can do to make this different. In my, it's, it's my, this is my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm taking Izzy. Straight up, I'm gonna ride with it until you know there is no more to ride for. I don't see Rob. I think Rob is one B, and we're talking about one A. Israel is one A. This is gonna be. Uh, I think it'll be. I ho- I'm hoping it will be a good one, but I just I really don't think so. I think it's gonna be a five round clinic again. Is he uh, just unanimous UD? He could take him out again if Rob gets an undisciplined. I just don't see Rob getting crazy again and wild. So I'm taking uh, Israel. I, I feel the same way as Mo. Israel via um, UD. Uh, and still, which was set up if Israel, if my predictions on the two, the two last middleweight, the, the last two middleweight fights, that to me, that was set up Jared Cannonier versus Israel Adesanya for the uh, title next. Um, Br- Brunson, while he is surgeon, he's like, like I said, He's looking good. If he were to get the win and, you know, have an Izzy rematch, that would be cool to see if he can, you know, improve enough to make that fight competitive. But if you think about it, both the fights that we're talking about, the first fight was so uncompetitive. Like, he beat the fuck out of Derek Brunson, he being Israel Adesanya. The last style being there knocked Robert Rob out twice. I mean, he knocked him down from the end of the first round. And, I mean, if it wasn't for the horn, that was that was curtains. And then he knocked him out in the second round. You know, like it's it's hard to see a different outcome, but knowing the grit and determination and ability of Robert Whitaker, I agree with you that this was this is going to be a different fight. Rob's tough man. He is not going to just lay down. We did. He took time off because he could have got a title shot a, a long time ago. 
He could have got this rematch a long time ago. He purposefully took other tough matchups, and a lot of guys in the division they don't do that. They get their, they try to get that instant rematch as quick as they can, and then if they lose, then they'll build their way back up. We've seen it over and over again, but I think that's that's what gives me so much confidence in Robert Whitaker's mindset. He didn't just straight go for the auto rematch. He took on Jared Cannonier, who's dangerous, and put on the clinic. He took on uh, what Calvin. He fought some tough, like tough competitors, and didn't take the, t- the immediate title rematch after getting you know body, even though it was offered to him. So I agree with you, Mark. Like it's gonna be a different fight. I just don't see him winning. So you don't see him making that record break in the first and the only middleweight that has ever regained the title. Don't see it. Don't see I it. I think I don't see it. I mean, I, I can't I can't see a path. Like I see I know that he's good. In fact, I would even stretch to say he's great. Robert is Robert Whitaker is amazing. I just think Israel Adesanya is the guy. Like he's like until his physical still skills start to decline because he's still getting better as well. Like he's, he came in as like pure kickboxer. And then after, you know, getting laid on by Blahovich, he's stepping his game up too. Like he's getting better in every skill as, as well. It's not like he's just resting on his laurels because if you watch the fight he had with um, the Italian stallion, the first time he was able to get Izzy to the ground. The second time, not so much. So, right. I, I think he only gets better in these rematches because it's not like he's just sitting there resting on his laurels like, oh, I already bopped this guy. He's still studying film hard and trying to get his skills up too because he's fighting for not only money, but at this point because he is the champion, but also his legacy as champion. So he has a, there's a lot on the table for him. He has a lot um, of pressure on his shoulders as well. So it's, I'm, I'm excited for this as a fan. Yeah. It's fantastic because both these guys are young. Both these guys have a long career ahead of them. And you know that this probably isn't even the last time that they'll see each other. This will probably be a trilogy, whether they like it or not. You think it's and I rematch? love every second of it. Yeah. If Whitaker wins, instant rematch? Oh, 100%. Yeah. And to be honest, as much as I hate to say it, I think Whitaker wins this one. The instant rematch, Izzy wins the second. Or the third, sorry. If some if somehow a Whitaker does pull this off and gets the win, I agree. They will get a there will be a third fight. And even if he doesn't, I still believe there'll be a third fight. Robert Whitaker is what, 32? He's 31. 31. All right. Cause like I said, I still I still view him as that one A, sorry one B in this division. I think he's like you know he's the sub boss to Israel being the boss in this division, and I see him matching up well against all the other competitors at middleweight. There's only a few guys that I can say he might have to watch out for, and they ain't on a, they ain't ready yet. They're not yeah. in the top ten yet. So like all Dang, the guys in the top, yeah, all the guys in the top ten. I feel like if Rob if Rob faces him, he's a favorite over all of them. All of them. He's I mean he's beaten most of the guys under him, including the guys we just mentioned, um, Drew Cannonier and uh, Derek Brunson. However, I just like I said before, I just don't I just don't see it. The only way I see this being a third fight is if Rob goes on another tear. I see is he taking a win here. I'm pretty confident. I'm not like backing. I feel confident in that. Like, I'm in fact, I'm very confident. I'm gonna. This is. It's gonna be a big one. I'm gonna put a big bet on this one. I like Izzy a lot. This matchup. I'm hoping the numbers are close, so that it won't cost so much juice. But yeah, taking Izzy. Currently not that close. What's the number right now? Uh, minus two eighty and plus two twenty five. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. I expect it to be uh, Izzy should be a pretty sizable favorite. Oh well, I think it'll only grow by the time you get to Saturday. I think that'll be a bigger gap. 
on those betting odds. But if you want to win some money, put it on Robert Whitaker. When is uh when's the media day? Tomorrow or Thursday? Mm. The press conference stuff. Tomorrow? Press conference I think is Thursday. And Wayne's uh, Friday? I think Yeah, Wayne's Friday and then I think to Day is open workouts. So media scrum maybe tomorrow. Okay. I, I'm 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 excited for it. This this is gonna be a good this is all this leading up to Saturday is gonna be whew. This card's pretty pretty stacked. From beginning oh, yeah. to end. I'm finally off for a for a good card, a good pay per view. So we can do a, excited uh, for this one. A quick recap on Sunday for it. Oh yes, we can. I'll be there for this one. Awesome. Early. Awesome. Early. 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 If you listen to the show and you like the content, I'd be thrilled if you like and subscribe. If you have any feedback you want to offer, I'm always in the comments. Mark's in the comments. Mo's in the comments. We uh just. Say what's up. Give us some. Give us some feedback. Let us know. Give us your opinions. You think I'm a, I'm an idiot? I got. I don't. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me know. I'm cool. Whatever. I don't know uh, nothing. I don't know nothing at all. You just, just want to talk shit to me on Twitter? Let's go. I'm clueless. I, I'm just a fan. So this is, all my opinions are just how I feel about it. Um, Ashy Knuckles MMA at Ashy Knuckles MMA on Twitter. Um. YouTube.com slash Ashy Knuckles MMA. Yes, yes. No. I'm Ashy, Ashy M, or Marky G on Twitter. All iPod. <laughs> <laughs> All podcasts, uh, wherever you get it, it's there. You can listen to us. Thanks. And I want to give a special shout out to all the people who are viewers right now, currently. Appreciate you supporting and listening to the content. Hell yeah. RJ, I hear you, man. Oh, every time you send me your Hamzat Shamayev stuff, I know you're a fan. I know you you want that. You you think he's coming up. There's some other guys to look out for though, but your man, hey, he is a he is a beast. Give you I'll give you that. Give you that. He's an Ebboy fan fan. <laughs> I mean, we got a couple. Him, Gabe, Casual Chris. Yeah. All right, guys. You guys ready to close it? Yep. Yeah. Let's call it. On that note. Zip, zip it, it up. up. Zip it out. <laughs>